It's Friday, January 3rd, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 15 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning December 30th, 2013. This week being the very start of a brand new year, the news cycle is a wee bit slow. So, in addition to covering the big stories so far this year, we're also going to try and predict some stories we think will make it big in 2014. We're going to call it TEN Forward, 10 Forward, because we're geeks, and who wouldn't like to have a drink with Guinan on 10 Forward on a Friday afternoon? Enough explanation, and time to make it so. This year, BMW will finally start sales of its i3 all-electric and i3 REX range extended EV in the US, bringing its stylish, futuristic looks into the plug-in marketplace. We're known for some time what US buyers would be paying for the entry-level i3 and i3 REX models, but now we know what all those extras will cost you courtesy of the official price list. While you can get seven different paint options, only two are available as standard. The other five are going to cost you $550 extra on top of the base model price. Then you have to choose one of three trim levels, Mega, Giga or Terra, with the Mega trim level being the base standard cost option and each trim level adding extra luxury and higher cost to your car. US model cars will come with heat pump based heating as standard, something only available in the UK as an optional extra. But other options like rear view camera, parking assistance, rapid DC quick charging, heated front seats and advanced navigation will cost you extra. Tick every option box and you'll be looking at a bill of $52,175 for the i3 and $56,025 for the i3 Rex. That's before incentives. In case you didn't know, we came to the end of 2013 on Tuesday evening. It's unlikely you missed that event with all the fireworks and the banging and the drunken singing and the bell ringing, but you know, maybe you did. Anyway, along with the end of another year, January the 1st marked the end of two US federal EV incentives designed to encourage EV adoption. One, a tax credit for anyone installing a domestic charging station at home means you'll now have to pay full whack for your own home charging station. The other, up to $2,500 off the price of a new electric motorcycle, will mean anyone buying an electric motorcycle this year won't be able to claim back any tax rebates from the taxman. And that means that their shiny two-wheeler will cost a little more to buy. Unless you're buying a Bramo electric motorcycle, or rather more, one of last year's 2013 model year bikes. In a clever move, the Oregon-based electric motorcycle manufacturer has announced its own discounting program, designed to ensure customers won't be put off buying their new ride because the two-wheel plug-in federal tax incentives have just ended. Called a retail incentive, folks can look forward to $1,000 off the price of a 2013 Bramo M Inertia Plus or $2,000 off the price of a super sexy six-speed Bramo Impulse. Bramo says the program will run until the end of its 2013 stock has been exhausted, but how long that will take or what happens next remains a bit of a mystery. We just love it when our viewers and readers tell us about pre-production and unusual EVs they've spotted in the wild, and this week has been no exception. This is a Mercedes-Benz B-Class electric drive. It's based on the highly popular European B-Class gasoline car, but will make its debut as a 2015 model in the US with the electric drivetrain as an only option. And like the Smart for 2 ED, this premium family hatchback features drivetrain and power system built for Mercedes by, yes, Tesla Motors. And that means the same 10 kilowatt onboard charging capabilities as standard as the Model S. Yummy. The car isn't itself due to go on sale until much later this year, yet Active E driver George Patak snapped this photograph of a pre production model, grabbing a charge at Electronic Arts in Silicon Valley earlier this week. EA! It's in the game. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Too many computer games played and it is the start of a new year. Anyway, Batak said this particular Benz, which we can clearly see has a three-digit identification sticker on the rear window, looks ready enough to buy. And we've got to agree. Why was a pre-production car at EA? Initially, we did think it was one of the executives having a play with a loaner car. But Scott Cronkey, CTO of EA, tells us that as EA takes the Christmas break and New Year break off, the car was most likely availing itself of an opportunity to charge while nobody else was around. Solar panels and electric cars work really well together. That's something we can all agree on. In fact, it's heavily documented that owning an electric car can halve the amount of time it takes a solar panel investment to pay off. But that's solar panels on the roof of your home, not the roof of your car. 
but Ford, who is unveiling its C-Max solar energy plug-in hybrid concept next week at CES 2014 in Las Vegas, reckons solar panels on cars are about to take off in a big way. To demonstrate, Ford has taken a standard C-Max energy plug-in hybrid and fitted it with 1.5 meters of solar panels, capable of producing peak power output of about 300 watts. In ideal situations, that equates to, wait for it, one mile of range from sunlight alone in a little over an hour. That's hardly practical enough to sort out most people's daily commutes. Yet, Ford is so keen to make roof-mounted EV solar panels viable that it's teamed up with the Georgia Institute of Technology and solar panel company SunPower to produce a carport containing many tiny Fresnel lenses. You know, one of those ridge ones that you sometimes see on the back of RVs to stop you running over small children and dogs when you back up. Well, in this case, the Fresnel lens atop a carport focuses the solar energy onto the roof of the concept car, intensifying the amount of energy the solar panels can generate and making it possible for the car to collect enough power during daylight hours to fill its 8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. But here's where it gets even crazier. In order to ensure the maximum solar energy is captured throughout the day, Ford's concept car slowly moves in the opposite direction to the sun, keeping the solar energy focused on its solar panels for as long as possible. Yep. This is probably the most bizarre application of a self-driving technology we've ever seen. And we can't help wonder if solar panels on the roof make more sense, at least for now. Here in the UK, we, like many other parts of the world, are struggling to get UK car buyers to make the switch from gasoline to electric. But over in Norway, where EV sales are positively blooming thanks to massive government incentives, EV ownership is so popular there that there just aren't enough plugs to go around. And who can blame Norwegians? EVs there are exempt from purchase tax, don't have to pay for parking or charging in public spaces, and can even drive in bus lanes without any problems. But as courts reported over the holidays, there are now so many electric cars in Norway's capital city, they outnumber buses, are on every corner, and drivers have to queue to find a place to charge. Charger anxiety instead of range anxiety, that's essentially the fear that someone else will be plugged in and charging when you need to use a station, is rife. With more than 15,000 EVs on the roads of Norway, the Norwegian government faces a tough decision within the next year. Experts say they have to choose between putting in more EV infrastructure or cutting the incentives which have made EVs so popular. What they'll do, and how it will impact EV sales, will be a closely watched thing. And now we're on to our final segment of the show. You know, the one I geeked about at the start? Well, this is what we think is going to be big this year. For 2014, we think there are going to be four big areas we'll be covering. So here's our brief rundown of each. Last year, self-driving car technology really started to gain speed, at least in the prototype phase. So expect more and more self-driving goodness from all the major automakers this year as they scramble to head off Nissan's apparent lead. We think Tesla will also demonstrate some form of the technology towards the end of the year that hints at self-driving, although unlike its rivals, we think Tesla will only show us the tech when it's ready for market. 2013 was the year of the dying charging network, and we think 2014 will blow away all of that with the birth of reliable pay-as-you-go charging infrastructure and we hope, the minimising of those darned RFID smart cards. But it'll be a slow progress. Expect weaker charging networks to die off and a few major companies to dominate the marketplace on each continent. We also think that charging networks will start to struggle with the fight between Chadamo, CCS and whatever other charging station someone is crazy enough to come up with. Tesla, meanwhile, will just keep on rolling out its superchargers with minimal fuss. Although we should note it's probably going to be slower than Tesla would like it. After three years of mediocre range for most EVs on the market, we think 2014 will see early mid-cycle updates from most automakers, offering perhaps as much as 10 or 20% increase in real-world range for 2015 model years. With Nissan already hinting at better battery tech, we think 2015 model years will also be able to achieve the magic 100 miles per charge if they're electric only, while plug-in hybrids and range-extended EVs will all fight it out for the best possible range with the smaller battery packs they have. We can't wait. Although we do think Tesla will still beat everyone else into submission in the range war. Talking of wars, 2013 marked the start of the EV price war, with most major EVs dropping massive chunks off their sticker prices in order to become more affordable. 
We think this will continue in 2014, with a knock-on effect meaning you'll soon be able to buy a brand new EV for less than a similarly specced gasoline car. We also think we'll be covering the growing market this year for used EV sales and aftermarket EV mods. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live on Sunday when we'll be discussing these and other stories on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up! He's been my teleprompter guy for today. Thank you, teleprompter guy.